the influential French philosopher of the 18th century, more commonly known as Voltaire, had a rather peculiar custom. He would finish all his letters, and I believe he did this over a number of decades, all his correspondence with the words, I creuset l'enfant, I creuset l'enfant, which I believe loosely translates to crush that loathsome thing. Rather peculiar words to finish off a letter. Crush that loathsome thing. What on earth could this very influential philosopher have loathed so much that he would finish every piece of correspondence by declaring such an obsessive hatred? It was the Catholic Church. He once said that if it took 12 apostles to establish Christianity, he would show that it would only take one man to pull it down. And to those who said, impossible, you can't destroy Catholicism, he said, this is exactly what we will see. Voltaire's principal thought was that human beings could only be truly free. You could only be truly enlightened if Christ and Catholicism was crushed from the world. And his friend, uh, Denis Diderot, who was another French philosopher, he put it like this, man will never be free until the last king is strangled by the entrails of the last priest. I think it's safe to assume he didn't like priests very much. Even though both Voltaire and, and Diderot went to Catholic schools, Today, French school children are often taken to visit Voltaire's tomb in Paris, and whereupon they can read the inscription, poet, philosopher, and historian. He elevated the human mind and taught men to be free. You can see there's a, there's a theme emerging here. Christ and Catholicism is considered an affront, an inhibitor, of human freedom. Something I've spoken about frequently, and it's something that's very pronounced in today's world. But let's be very clear here. You know, this perception, this perception the church is against human freedom, is not peculiar to 18th century France nor our own time. This is precisely the perception that Christ addresses in the parable we find in today's gospel. The landowner, who is God, leases land to tenants in the vineyard. He gives them land on trust. In other words, he gives us time. He gives us life. But the expectation is that he will return and wants to see some produce, that we've done something with our lives that's good and noble. In other words, you and I are just leasing life. And one day, without question, without exception, the owner will ask us to give an account of what we have produced. Now that idea of divine judgment is a haunting challenge to humanity. The idea of accountability can unnerve us and perturb us. So as in the gospel, there's this real temptation to want to thrash, kill and stone anyone or anything that reminds us of that reality. It's like if you go past St. Mary's Cathedral in the city, you cannot but think of God. When you see that building, it's, it's almost you like to want to avoid it. The idea, okay, maybe there is something one day that will hold me accountable. And, and as the gospel says, they even kill the sun. The most powerful reminder of the fact that we don't own our freedom. They will even kill the divine sun. Now, what this means for us is quite simple. First, we should not underestimate how provocative the faith is in every age. Even just being a practicing Catholic is provocative. It's challenging to people. Catholicism today remains in many quarters the final reminder to human beings that your life is not your own. Your life is not your own. Should we be in any way surprised then, putting aside the church's teachings, but simply by existing, the church's presence is frequently met with either anger or aggression 
or just ignorance and indifference. Now, our, our parish World Youth Day pilgrims, they did go to France. They didn't go to Voltaire's tomb, though. By providence, however, we did pray before the relics of a 14-year-old boy named Jose Sanchez del Rio, a 20th century Mexican martyr, only lived a few decades ago. A 14-year-old boy who died for no other reason but odium fidei, just sheer hatred for the Catholic faith. For that sheer reason alone, a 14-year-old boy dies a martyr. Actually, I was with Jonathan, and during our visit to the Shrine of Guadalupe, our tour guide brought us to the back of, and showed us a cabinet. And it had a picture of a young boy, and inside was a reliquy. And inside the reliquy were some of the bones from this boy's foot. During the communist persecution of the Catholic Church in the 20th century, this is in Mexico, Jose was arrested. A 14-year-old boy was arrested because he assisted one of the leaders of the resistance, those who were defending the faith against the government. He simply gave the, the, the leader his horse so that he could escape. That's all he did. And though he was arrested. And being so young, the government soldiers said to him, look, all you need to do is just say, death to Christ. Use your freedom and say death to Christ and you can go home. But he refused. And so they condemned him to death. And in prison, he writes to his mother and he writes these words. My dear mother, surrender yourself to the will of God. I die happy because I will bravely die next to our God. Have courage and give me your blessing. Say hello to everyone for the last time and receive the heart of your son who loves you so much and so longs to see you before he dies. Now on the day of his execution, the soldiers tried one last time to frighten him into submission. So they cut the skin off his feet, shredded his skin off his feet and made him walk barefoot through the streets to the cemetery where there was an open grave. And the guy told us that the soldiers had his mother standing there. And one last time, the soldier says, look, there is your mother. All you need to say is death to Christ and you can go home. You'll be free. Just say death to Christ and you can go to your mother. But instead he shouts, 14 year old boy, long live Christ the King and long live Our Lady of Guadalupe. And so they shoot him twice. And he falls to the ground and they bury him. Voltaire's tomb read that he taught men to be free. But on his deathbed, Voltaire exclaimed, I am abandoned by God and by man, and he screams in agony. His prophecies about the church prove very hollow indeed. St. Jose Sanchez's reliquy reads the words that he cried out with true freedom. Christ is king. We can now understand a little more perhaps what our Lord meant when he said, it was the stone rejected by the builders that has become the keystone and it is wonderful for us to see. I am sure it never crossed that 14 year old boy's mind that one day a group of young Australians would hear his story and pray before his bones with several of those young people in tears. In order to produce fruit, we must be firm in the faith, particularly in the face of ignorance, aggression and hatred. We must remind our world that freedom is only found in virtue, not vice, in holiness, not hedonism. In the end, freedom always cries out for truth. Without truth, without Christ, freedom becomes despair. As St. Augustine said, if you only believe what you like in the gospel and reject the bits that you don't like, it's not the gospel you believe, but yourself. And simply put, that's not freedom, but tyranny.